This is one of the weirdest off-season videos that I've ever put together because this year's Miami Heat are one of the weirdest teams that I've ever looked at. They were a couple of points away from making the finals. They were the one seed in the Eastern Conference, but at the same time, a lot of people didn't really take them seriously as real contenders until we got late into the postseason. They've got aging players, but they've also got young players and assets. They've got the opportunity to add some big time additions this offseason. There's a lot of different ways this can go. And so I'm excited. Let's talk about them. Okay, so first up, I do want to give the proper amount of credit to the Miami Heat for the season that they had because I was not really a believer in them really until late in the playoffs. I thought during the regular season they were fine. I just, I didn't see enough offense creation on this team if Kyle Lowry was not going to be super healthy. I didn't see enough for them offensively to really be a true contender. And I think at certain points in that Celtic series that was shown, but also Jimmy Butler had a couple of incredible games and they, like I said, were a couple points away from making the finals. So all credit to them. One of their issues though, in terms of their regular season record was that they were able to make that happen even with a lot of guys missing games and that is going to be a concern moving forward for almost everybody on the roster. Bam, JB, Tyler Hero, Kyle Lowry, these guys missing significant time in the regular season can very quickly shrink your championship window. Because even though they were impressive in the postseason, they played a bad Hawks team in the first round. They played a Sixers team that was kind of falling apart and basically gave up by the end of that series in the second round. And then of course, a very good Celtics team. So a lot of the success that they had came from the fact that they were very good in the regular season, overcoming those injuries, but you can't guarantee that'll continue to happen. Now, like I said, they were very very, very good. But my main concern moving forward for Miami, with the exception of the injury stuff, is how do they raise their ceiling? Because I, I think it's pretty easy to make the argument that if they just run it back next year, which they have the opportunity to do, there's only a couple of guys that they're missing from the rotation. Oladipo and Martin are free agents. Everybody else pretty much will be returning, assuming PJ Tucker uh, opts into his player option. If you run it back with the same team, I think it's very easy to make the argument that you are not a championship contender next season. And I know that's weird to say for a team that was a couple of points away from making the finals, but I think it was a weird postseason. They played well, but I wasn't overwhelmingly, you know, convinced of this team's viability as a championship contender, specifically on the offensive end of the floor. And as JB gets a year older, as Kyle Lowry gets a year older, I'm just, I'm just not convinced. Like, I, I think it's possible. I mean, if Kyle Lowry's healthier next season, if JB is healthier, if Pam Adebayo is healthier, obviously health had a, had a large part to do with some of their struggles later on in the postseason. It's possible they're still a contender next year, but I think they need to make some moves. And that's not a bad situation to be in if you're Miami, because they are a team that is able to make those kinds of moves. Moves. In contrast to a team we've talked about in the past, the Memphis Grizzlies, who I think need to make a similar ceiling raising type move, they don't have the ability to bring in big time players the way that Miami has over the years. This is a front office that has been aggressive in the past, and I would expect that to continue. And fortunately for them, if that's the conclusion that they come to as well, they have plenty of opportunities to make moves along this roster. The first couple are very, very obvious. One, I, I don't I don't have an explanation for what happened to Duncan Robinson. He was one of the better three-point shooters in the entire league for the last couple of seasons. Signs this big contract in the offseason, and this year was just frankly not good. Like he played a lot in the regular season, basically wasn't a part of the postseason rotation. Max Strews kind of took his role, and it's just going to be tough to be paying a guy like that $18 million a year to be a full time podcaster. Like it just is. Like he needs to be more productive on the floor. I don't know what happened there. I don't know if, it, if it's a confidence thing, whatever the case may be. But if he's not shooting the ball well, he can't play because he can't guard. And having that big of a contract on the roster for someone with that level of production is a problem. And they can look to move that, or what I think is more realistic realistic, rather than trying to move that by itself, try and convince another team that this guy is still young. He's still a very good shooter. He can still be in that like Joe Harris level production, include him with somebody else and try and get value out of the contract number that he has. In this example, I think they should look at trading Tyler Hero. I think that is the most obvious point of improvement for this team because you can go to Chicago, Philadelphia, uh, you know, any of these other teams that have big time, Washington with Bradley Beal, any of these teams that have a big time guard that you can pair alongside Jimmy Butler. I think any of them would be interested in bringing in someone like Tyler Hero. Maybe Philadelphia less so because they're a team that's kind of like on the cusp of contention. But Tyler Hero is 22, 23 years old. He just averaged 20 points per game, six man of the year. He's going to continue to improve. He's very, very good. And I think if you put him, Duncan Robinson's salary and some picks together, I think you can start to get relatively close to being able to bring in someone like Bradley Beal on a sign and trade. I think that's something that could start to interest Washington because of, of the asset that Tyler Hero is and can be in a trade. And if you're looking at your roster for Miami, it's 
very clear to me that offensive creation is an issue, especially if you want to continue to have to rely on Kyle Lowry in the postseason, because you can see that when he's good, he's very good. He's very helpful. But age, injuries, those things I think are going to continue to be a problem for him. And it, like it was defensible to give him all that money last offseason, but I think it's okay to take the L on that and say, this probably isn't a guy that if we're looking at trying to be a contender next year, the year after, that we want to really be counting on for offensive creation. So you can use that like Miami Heat, you know, ability to bring in free agents and, and bring in players and sign and trade, just like when they brought in Jimmy Butler in the first place. And you can use the, the asset that you have in Tyler Hero to make that happen. Now, the counter to that would be if JB and Kyle Lowry are getting older, you, you still have Bam, you still have Tyler Hero. Why would you not just allow the young guys to grow rather than trying to skip a step? Well, the reason why would be Tyler Hero is going into next year, his last year on his rookie contract. He's getting paid a couple million dollars next year. And the year after that, you're going to have to pay him a ton of money. And then you're looking at a team that is well, well above the luxury tax that might not be contenders. Like the worst case scenario for Miami next season is like you keep um, you keep Tyler here on the roster and then guys get hurt. It's, it's kind of like the season that they had, not this year, but the year before where you're never really significant part of, of the, the championship contention conversation. And you also retained this asset in Tyler Hero by signing him to an extension, but his value is lower because of the big number that he is now on. And you didn't take advantage of an opportunity that you had to raise the ceiling of your team. And so I think the entirety of the offseason for, for Miami revolves around, can we maybe try and get some value out of Duncan Robinson, or maybe he just gets better and is better next year? And, or can we move Tyler Hero in exchange for a very good perimeter guard that we can hide some of their defensive deficiencies alongside Jimmy Butler and, and make it work with someone that just provides us more of an offensive punch. Because for Miami, one of their issues was like they, they could not put a lineup on the floor that gave them enough on offense while still retaining their defensive identity. Like that's the reason that Tyler Hero and Duncan Robinson really couldn't play together this year because they're not very good defensively and they needed Hero's defense or excuse me, they needed Hero's offense at the end of these games, but he couldn't guard. And so he would just get hunted at the end of these games. And it was a huge issue for them to not have two-way players. Now, I'm not going to tell you that someone like Zach Levine or Bradley Beal is going to be an A-plus defender and be a better defender than Tyler Hero, but they will be a better offensive player. And so that kind of helps that calculation a little bit for you. I think ideally, if you were to ask Miami, hey, like what's your perfect offseason? I think ideally for them, they would prefer to get Zach Levine. I think we've seen on the Olympic stage that Levine, when he's locked in and engaged, can certainly be at least an average defender defender, if not better than that. And I think he's someone that I could see being drawn to the idea of playing in Miami, playing alongside Jimmy Butler, competing for a championship, because that idea might be a little bit far away for him in Chicago. DeMar DeRozan is now there and has kind of taken over as like the guy. I think that's a real possibility and something that I really think that Miami should explore. Apart from Levine, like I said, we mentioned Harden, unrealistic. Bradley Beal, I think is pretty realistic. Donovan Mitchell feels slightly unrealistic at the moment, just because we haven't heard anything about Utah's willingness to move him. And he's obviously under contract for the next couple of season. So those other three guys are a little bit more viable just given the fact that they are free agents this offseason or can be if they choose to be. But I really, really think that that is the option Miami should take because if your goal is to win the title, right? Like if your goal isn't sustained success over the next four to five seasons, but if your goal is to try and win a championship within the next year or two, I think you have to cash in on the Tyler Hero asset because even as good as Jimmy Butler was at certain points this postseason, he's going to be a year older. He's never been the most durable player in the world. And same thing with Kyle Lowry. And if you're looking at relying on those guys, in the postseason, next year might be your last real legitimate chance to be a contender, even if you make this trade, even if you do go out and get someone like Zach Levine. And I think that's an opportunity you should try and take advantage of. You, you've shown that the, your system and your structure and your ability to get you know uh, gems in, in the draft or undrafted pool, guys like Max Strews, Gabe Vincent, in combination with your ability to guard, you've shown that that has the ability to potentially get you very, very close to the finals. And you could make one more move to make yourself better offensively and really put push yourself over the edge. That has to be the priority again, if your goal is to win the title. Now, taking a step back from that for a moment, there are some other options you could explore here. There might be some rumors out there about maybe them trying to move on from Kyle Lowry. I think that's unlikely given the fact that him and Jimmy Butler are very close. And that's one of the reasons that he chose to go to Miami in the first place, not to mention the fact that I don't think there's a ton of value out there in exchange for Kyle Lowry in a trade, but you might see some buzz there. There might even be some buzz about a Bama to bio trade, considering the fact that, you know, his contract is, is significant, not a lot of 
teams, maybe Miami included, want to pay that much to a center that's not like a, you know, a top tier MVP caliber guy like Jokic or Embiid. I think that's unrealistic. I think Bam is, he's a little bit different in terms of, of, of value at the center position because of the, the versatility he provides defensively. He can guard pretty much anyone. He does have some perimeter skill. I don't expect them to make that kind of move. And so I do think the, the conversation in terms of how to improve this offseason for them is going to be centered around Duncan Robinson, Tyler Hero, and maximizing their championship window next year or the season after. They've shown what it can look like with this group, and I think it's at least relatively likely they could take a step back next year if they don't cash in on the Hero asset. If his rookie contract wasn't ending next year, I wouldn't feel as strongly about moving on from him, but given the contract situation with him, the expense of the rest of this roster, the fact that it feels like an all-in team right now, I would certainly look to make that move. But at the end of the day, this was obviously a very successful season for Miami. You know, getting one game a couple of points away from making the finals is no small feat, and they're definitely going to be a team to watch this offseason.